stroll down High Street East in Casterbridge, Thomas Hardy's name for Dorchester, continue along London Road and soon, spanning the River Froome, you come to Grey's Bridge, where a notice threatens transportation if you misbehave yourself. This spot is featured in Hardy's novel The Mayor of Custerbridge, and from here a walk can be taken across country to a cottage at Higher Bockhampton. This is where it all started. On the way is St. Michael's Church, Stinsford. The inspiration for Melstock Church in Under the Greenwood Tree. Hardy's body rests at Westminster Abbey, but his heart is buried here with his two wives, Emma and Florence. Take a look inside the church. Balancing the exposure between the bright windows and a dark interior is the photographic challenge and not easy to manage. I spot metered near a window, allowing it to be rendered slightly overexposed with the interior now much darker. It was handheld, the raw image corrected in Lightroom using the basic slider controls. Passing around the grounds of Kingston Morwood House, now a college, and keeping to the public footpath, the National Trust Visitor Centre for Hardy's Cottage is only one mile away. Timed tickets for entry must be obtained first, even for National Trust members, as the cottage is 700 yards further on. There are a choice of routes, an easy level track or Thorncombe Woods. The woodland path is much more appealing, but there are slopes and uneven ground to negotiate. I went in autumn when it looked particularly stunning, spot metering off highlights and then correcting shadows in Lightroom as required. This route also offers a unique sight of the cottage that looks straight out of a fairy tale book, a view denied to visitors coming the other way. Photography is permitted inside the cottage, but it is very cramped and there is a limit to the number of visitors it can take at one time, so tripods and flash are out of the question. Time to test the image stabilizer in camera or lens, even both, to avoid increasing the ISO. There is a huge exposure difference if a window is included, which again I spot metered, giving me actually a shutter speed that was more convenient to hand hold. I then saved to RAW and afterwards corrected in Lightroom. As well as his birthplace, it was here that Hardy wrote Far From the Madding Crowd, not his first novel, but the first to gain public recognition. Puddletown Forest, the heath behind the cottage, was the model for Egdon Heath in The Return of the Native and later Gustav Host's musical turn poem. A circular route can be taken, which I took on a glorious sunny autumn afternoon. Not perhaps the right impression conjured up in the opening pages of the novel. But if you suffer the misfortune of a really awful day, then you will be closer to capturing the mood of the novel. The return is the way we came. There are not many choices to vary the outward route without a wide detour. However, back at Stinsford it is worth diverting to Max Gate on the outskirts of Dorchester close to the Ring Road, which of course came later. Hardy was trained as an architect and following success of his early novels, he designed and built for himself this Victorian house, in which he lived for the rest of his life. Again, it is now owned by the 
National Trust, and the room where he wrote many of his major works, including The Mayor of Casterbridge, can be entered. Here, in a moment of quiet reflection, you can perhaps imagine Hardy creating his later novels and poems right here in this very room. <laughs> 